butcher the lamb today. butcher the lamb today and we love our animals we really do and this is one of the hardest things for me it, to actually take a life of an animal that we've raised we've went out there and fed that they're we've almost loved on. like pets so I want it to go as smoothly and painlessly as possible because I sure don't want my animal to suffer but that's part of living life on a farm or a homestead you harvest animals just like you would harvest your crops so I'm just getting a few knives ready here um, we don't shoot the animals. We just we uh, we we cut their throat, and it's usually it's it's immediate. Uh, even it's less stressful than someone who would use a you know shoot them in the head. If you cut their throat, it's even more immediate than that. They just go to sleep. And it's really, it's almost like they just go to sleep. So that's what I'm doing right now. We're fixing to get ready to go out there probably here in the next little bit. So I just want to make sure I have my knife sharp. What happens if you don't have a sharp knife? It's, it's terrible for the animal. Yeah, so it, you want to make sure you you're able to make one quick clean cut all the way through and down to the bone otherwise if you don't if you don't sever the arteries then it's not going to die fast and it's going to suffer a whole lot and we do not want that and their hide is thick so yeah so you gotta make sure you have like a super super sharp knife well every day and we don't just go out there and feed them I mean we go pet them and they're not only farm animals they're kind of like pets too to be honest so this to me is not the most fun thing I actually I hate doing this but I'll show you guys how I do it um, everybody's got their own way things but I get them down on the ground like this where I have good access and I grab their nose and I come across here with the knife this is the knife I use it's, it's really sharp I sharpened it this morning and you want to make sure your knife is really really if your knife is not sharp, it's going to be a mess and the animal is going to suffer and you're not going to feel really good about it. So to make a hard thing easier, make sure your knife is very, very sharp. So like I said, you just you want to get them down like this and you want to grab front and you want to bring the knife all the way across and deep so you make sure to sever the arteries and they go they go
go pretty quick. Now the hard part's over. The hard part for me is actually taking the light. But I was just explaining to my son, he was upset, and I was explaining to him that every time we eat a piece of meat, this has to happen somewhere. So I was explaining to him that our animals even have names. His name is Jack. And I was explaining to my son that Jack had a really good life and he knew that we loved Jack, but his job on our homestead is to provide food. So we treat our animals really, really well. And these things are not always hard. I mean, not always easy. They're really hard. But, like I explained to my son, he had such a better life than an animal that would have been raised on the feedlot somewhere. Because we actually raised him and loved him. And now he's giving us food. And we're very appreciative of that. So these things are hard, but it's part of it. This one, he had a really good life. So we'll get into it now. The way I do it is I ring the back legs right above the joint there. For any of you that's ever skinned a deer, it's about the same thing. Then I just get under the skin and run it down peel this back just a little bit. Most people just poke a hole in the back and then they get hair all over their meat. We uh, had a deer processing shop for about 10 years and there's a lot going on when you have a couple hundred deer a year. So you get it down past this tendon right there and that's where you want to other leg the same way bring it around try to get a little as little hair as you can sometimes that's that's different you just you take that down right there that right there get your single tree through there So usually what I do is I will go down here and kind of come down until I get to the middle and then go all the way down the belly, all the way down the neck. It's important to have a sharp knife for this too. Far under the under the 
skin where you could potentially bust open the insides and that would be really stinky. Some people use those hooks on their knives, but if you're careful, it's not a necessity. down this side and meet it right there. Usually what I do is I'll take this little flap of skin, go ahead, get it up over the back that way you don't have to worry about getting dirt or hair on your meat as you're skinning the front side let's go ahead and do that like i said this is the way i do it some people they there's a thousand different ways to do this this is just how i've always done it and it works best for me Bring the front legs just like you did the back legs. And then get under the skin just like you did the back legs. Just follow it up until you get to the where you made the cut down cut all the way down. Same with the other leg. And what I do is just take and just start peeling the hide back. not to do that where I just cut through the hide number one if you want to save the hide you don't want a bunch of holes in it and number two you'll get hair all over your meat and the hair is sometimes very hard to wash off just get on this side and just fold it around There's a gland, that's a gland, and there's one on each side of this leg. You wanna make sure to get that out of there because you don't want that in your meat. That goes for most all mid size or pro probably even large animals. It will make your meat taste bad. It'll make it taste very gamey. Okay. So now when you've gotten down to the tail, I don't know if you can see the bone right there, but that's the bone from the tail. You wanna find the joint of that tail and you can go right through it with your knife. If you don't find that joint, it's hard to cut that cartilage.
And it is easier to cut if you keep tension on the hide. And then once you get the skin kind of peeled around like this, I just reach up under there and grab the tail and just pull it down like that. take this kind of you want to stay there's some I don't know what you really call that stuff but it's between the skin and the bone and that's what you want to cut off if you get too far in you'll cut the, some of the meat off and if you get too far in to the skin you'll get hair on your meat first time it is helpful to have someone here to hold it and you can do this on the ground if you don't have a any way to hang one it's just easier and cleaner and if it's your first time doing it don't be discouraged if it takes you an hour <laughs> You'll look here you can drop that the same way we did the tail where the joint on the tail it's the same way right here if you look you can you can find where between the vertebrae go right through it with a knife no problem now you want to cut the part of the leg that's still got the hair
I would usually use a Sawzall for this, but unfortunately my Sawzall bit the dust the other day and I haven't been able to get another one yet. So I'm using this one. it off with water first because once you open up once you open up this part the steam will come up and actually make the hair stick to it worse so before this is still warm on the inside so before you open it up spray it off and it will won't get near as much hair on the meat it'll be a whole lot cleaner if you try to wash it off after you open it up it's just stuck on there want to hold Hang your on. fingers inside there while you go down because you do not want to poke open the guts you will have a mess on your hands so just be real slow and easy and follow it down until you get down you'll feel the the chest bone right there once you make it to it that's far enough That's just water. <laughs> That's what I'd say too. <laughs> Spot you. And then once you get down far enough, all the guts will start falling out. And then you wanna cut. Well, I need do to it get from the back. So we can right see. here. So you want to cut around that part. And you do not want to bust the bladder either because that also will make a mess. So once you get it cut from right there, on that side, you just reach in there with your hand and you should be able to pull it out fairly easy. Very, yeah, very carefully because yeah. it is very thin. Now, just kind of go inside here. Just, uh, hey, can we turn this way so the sun can actually show? There we go. So what you want to do is, is cut this little membrane right there. And they should just start falling out. So my wife likes to keep the liver. So this part is the liver. The bile and you want to make sure to cut the bile sac out. It's that nasty looking part right there. If it busts on any of your meat, your meat is ruined. So, cut that meat off and get rid of it. You gotta, I'm going to 
lamb liver. Yeah. What else do you want to keep off of the heart? The heart will be down like close to the bottom. So you just keep following down with your knife. Once you get past this part of the insides, anything that you, you, there's nothing else to bust open here that would, you know, cause anything bad to happen to the meat. It's just the lungs and the heart and the throat. So there's, you're not going to get any gut juices on your meat. And the heart is usually the last thing that pops out. And there's the heart. So you just cut it out of the little. Yes, the heart. And then go right in there. And then have to cut it. Now you want to open up the rib cage right here so we can we'll be able to separate the two sides of the ribs and like i said i usually use a sawzall which is a lot easier but this is what i this is what i have so I'm gonna try it down to where the throat is. And then you can finish pulling out the rest of the throat. Just get it. that comes out like that. And right here is the flank meat. It's good for, I guess, grinding. I don't really know what else you would use it for. You could can it or chop it up fine for a stew. that side off the same way. And the shoulders, the front shoulders are not connected by a joint. It's just all cartilage. So what you want to do is take 
the shoulder and spread it out a little bit and just go right down the inside of it and if you look right here i know you probably can't see it but you would you can feel it you can feel the shoulder blade so you want to cut the shoulder blade off just like that and see you can see there's the top part of the shoulder blade just follow that around Do this one the same way and then you can see the shoulder blade right there just follow it around till you get to the top of the shoulder blade and then you have another lamb shoulder like I said earlier, my saw's all broke, so I'm just having to use this. So you can get something really heavy like a meat cleaver. It would probably be better than this. You just go all the way down. right here there's a there's another gland like I showed you that was in the back leg you want to get that out of there that's, that's no good it'll make your meat taste really bad and then there's one right here too and you want to get it out of there and then all these little ones up here those things out. I don't like them. If you can see them, they kind of look like a, a rock. Yeah. Just get them all out of there. Bear. want to do after you've gotten the shoulders and the ribs and the glands off I'm just gonna cook this whole piece the neck and the and the back strap and the inside loin I'm just gonna smoke it on the smoker so I'm just gonna cut all this off in one piece there's not much meat on it anyways one more time and just cut right down the middle check it for glands and whatnot so you may have to trim it up a little bit You 
got the two hindquarters.